I was four years old the first time I remember being called fat. And I was in grade school when I remember walking in the bathroom and overhearing two of my best friends laughing at my need for a bra for my man boots. And I was in high school when I remember walking into my parents' old-fashioned Baptist church, plopping myself on a dusty old pew, only to be made fun of by the preacher in the pulpit about my buttons popping as I sat. So by the time I got to college, I knew one thing, and I knew it well. My body was a joke. My body was hilarious to everyone except me. And nobody wants a hilarious body. As you can imagine, I worried. Worried that I'd never be the man, whatever that means. That I wouldn't be taken seriously by employers. And perhaps most worrisome, that I'd never get laid. So I started a process that many overweight people are very familiar with. You know the one. Characterized by binge diets, crazy exercise, powders, pills, potions, magic. None of it worked. For every 13 pounds I lost, 16 came back. For every 28 pounds I lost, 34 packed back on. And with every success came the failure shortly thereafter. And with that failure, again, the reminder that my body and my efforts were a joke. So in an effort to get a body that others would take more seriously, I made a big change. And I stand before you tonight at 230 pounds, looking a lot different than I did four years ago at 370. Now, with that transformation comes an entirely different perspective on the world. Like many overweight people can tell you, or people who have been through a significant weight loss journey can tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy at the top. It's certainly not easy as you're going through the process. And believe it or not, it's not easy when you're done. And spoiler alert, you are never, ever, ever completely done. So you begin to look around you for motivation and support, and luckily, We live in a time where messages about health, wellness, and fitness are all around us. Tonight, I want to share some of my experience with those messages, with full regard to my positionality. As somebody who identifies as a straight, white, cisgender man, I've got to recognize that my experiences with fitness may not be the same as yours. But I think that there's enough universal truth here that this does apply to you. And I'm excited about the ways that it doesn't, because what that means is that there's room for you to be a part of this conversation. But as that very specific type of man, I have to recognize that there's a very specific type of body that's out there waiting for me, a body I'm told that I should have. And that body looks a lot like this. This is Bob. He's a dear friend. He's a man of few words. But he's agreed to stand up here tonight to help me prove a very important point because this is the body that men in my demographic, and men beyond that demographic, are reaching for. It's the body that we desperately want and told that we should have. Bob's perfect. He's got chiseled arms, rock-hard chest, washboard abs, strong legs that give him a firm foundation. He's what we call mesomorphic. He's situated in the very middle spot, a very coveted space on a continuum. He's big, but he's not fat. And he's toned, but he's not too skinny. He's perfect. And his body represents a lot of hard work. And there's nothing wrong with that hard work, there's nothing wrong with that body, and there's nothing wrong with Bob. But I think that there might be something wrong with the idea of Bob. And similarly, I don't think that there's anything wrong with fitness, but I wonder if there's something wrong with the idea and the ideas we have about fitness. Go with me here. Very rarely do we see bodies that look like this in the natural social world. Sure, the beach, the gym, the pool, But there's something so jarring, so alarming, so different about the exposed male body. In fact, since 2002, over 800 Hollywood-produced films have been flagged for nudity in their ratings. Yet only a dozen or so have been flagged specifically for male nudity. Why? Because we have this underlying assumption that if bodies are exposed, of course they'd be women's bodies. And we know that we're inundated with hyper-sexualized images of women and their bodies everywhere we look, every day, all around us. But when we see bodies like this one, in the rare case that they're exposed, and if they're aesthetically pleasing, straight, gay, doesn't matter, those get our attention. And as somebody desperately trying to shed my body in pursuit of this one, I can tell you that it got mine. But again, we don't see those bodies isolated from a very specific context. To help me illustrate, let's go on a mental field trip together. You can close your eyes if you want the full effect, but let's take a mental field trip to our local grocery store. Let's walk in. We grab a cart, 
and let's wander down the aisles and fill it with everything we need for a nice, relaxing evening dinner at home. Again, we walk in, we grab our items, we grab our last item, and we make our way to the front. And if your grocery store is anything like mine, there are 42 checkout lanes and two are open. So we wait in line. We're waiting and we're waiting, and as we're waiting, our eyes wander naturally to the magazine rack. And there, amidst celebrity scandal, political gossip, and dozens of crossword puzzles, is a magazine. And it gets our attention because first and foremost, it has a body that looks like this on the front cover. And it's got an inviting title, something like Men's Health, Wellness, and Fitness. And I'm a man. I want to be healthy and well and fit, so I pick it up. An innocent enough behavior, but have you ever stepped back and looked beyond the body, and beyond the title, and looked at the messages that are being sold alongside these bodies? Those messages, I believe, tell a different tale, a deeper tale about what fitness really is. And I've compiled just a few for you tonight. Because these messages tell men very specific things about their bodies. Number one, they tell us that this type of body is something we must have no matter what, which is why we must work at it 24-7, literally around the clock, putting this as one of the top priorities in men's life. We know that no matter what, no pain, no gain, you've got to learn how to train around your injuries. Even if you're broken, figure it out. Suck it up. That's what a man does, and that's what a fit man does. Why? Why put in all this work? Well, because there are benefits. And we know that there are benefits. There's a lot of them. As Flex Magazine notes, you can learn how to split your shirt in six easy steps. Who wouldn't want to do that? That's so cool, right? Why would we do that? Because we know that that action comes along with a whole host of other benefits as well. And yes, of course, I'm talking about sex. Lots and lots of sex. Sex so good she'll brag to her friends. Life-changing sex because, duh, better abs, better sex. But it's not just sex. There's so much more beyond this as well. As Men's Health notes, you can spike your metabolism, double your salary, and boost your energy, all with the power of fitness. You can have your best year ever. You can build superhuman strength, sleep more, stress less, and dodge relationship disasters. Boy, fitness can do a lot for us. And because it can do a lot for us, we're told that we need to protect it. Once we've got it, oh, protect it. Which is why we've got to build bigger guns. We've got to be like wolves looking for blood. We've got to become the ultimate warrior. We need to build weapons of mass definition to protect this. This type of masculinity is pretty darn fragile. And you say, okay, Phil, step off your feminist pedestal for one second and recognize those are just words. They're designed to get us to open up the pages. And I agree with you. So let's open up the pages. Because if we open up the pages, we're also able to open up a different conversation, an important conversation, a conversation about how bodies are positioned all around us every day. And yes, of course, I'm talking about advertising and media, not just in magazines, in the billboards we see driving down the highway, and in the websites we see surfing online. And when I call attention to images that I see all around me, images like this one, that situate the fit male body perfectly at the center of a very troubling narrative. And I see images like this one that feature bodies that I so desperately seeking, bodies I'm told that I should have. And then I take a closer look and I look not only what those bodies look like, but what those bodies are doing. I've got to step back and ask, am I able to actually sort through, this is what my body should look like, and this is what I'm supposed to do with my body once I have it? I think that the wires get crossed somewhere along the way. And I think that these messages tell us something very, very toxic about fitness, and specifically about masculinity and fitness. But ever the skeptic, I also recognize that these are fictions. They're narratives. They're designed to be controversial. And I think that that's problematic enough. So I asked. I asked real men, everyday men, men like me, men like many of you. 28 men, I asked them to go out and capture what it means to be a man pursuing physical fitness. These men took their smartphone cameras, a technology that sits in every one of our pockets, and they went out and did just that. They took image after image after image about what it means to be a man pursuing physical fitness. With only those instructions, those men yielded hundreds upon hundreds of images. And I can't summarize every single one of those images, but what I can tell you is that they all prove this very point. That fit masculinity is something you've got to have no matter what. 
if your rib cage is showing from training too hard, if you're busted up, if you've bloodied your knuckles, if you've broken your ankle, who cares? Suck it up. Be a man and keep on going. Why? Because there are benefits. You get to look like an Abercrombie bag. You get to look like a fitness model. You get to look like Michael Jordan. You get to be the man. And if you're the man, guess what else you get? Oh, yes, sex. Lots and lots of sex. More sex than I ever even knew existed. Very specific types of sex with very specific looking people. But it's not just sex. There's so much more that fitness will give you. It brings you money, social capital, social dominance, cars, jobs, wealth, dominance, power. And with great power comes great responsibility, right? That's what these men felt. And they knew that they had to protect what had been given to them, this very sacred thing called fitness. And with only the instructions to capture what it means to be a man pursuing fitness, I received so many images that look like these. And I think that although these are not the glossed up Photoshop images that you see in the billboards, the magazines, and the websites you surf, these images are real. They're not fictions, but they tell us a very troubling tale about masculinity and the pursuit of fitness. Now tonight, I want to be very clear. I am not bringing the indictment down on fitness and saying it's a bad thing or something you shouldn't pursue. It's something I pursue every single day. And I'm certainly not saying that fitness causes these behaviors, but I am suggesting very strongly that it's a context in which we're allowing these very specific types of toxic masculinities to permeate. I'm not asking you to write your senators or write these companies or boycott their products. All that has a time and a place. But all of that is completely worthless if we aren't first willing to step back. I challenge all of us. That's the theme that binds us here together tonight, right? Challenging what is. That's what I want to do. Challenge all of us to do just that. To step back. To be critical consumers and to be conscious of the messages that we're buying alongside these bodies. Alongside this idea of fitness. I challenge all of us to step back and start small conversations because that's important. I challenge all of us to definitely step back and consider our own motivations, our own assumptions, our own pursuits, to make sure that this pursuit of fitness is as pure as what we say that it is. And ultimately, I challenge every single one of us to step back and to recognize that our bodies are not jokes. Mine's not, yours isn't. But let's be sure, let's be darn sure that as we're pursuing bodies like this one, that other people are going to take so seriously, that we're not doing so in a way that comes along with a host of other very real, very serious consequences. Thank you.